Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start the meeting for the Animals Control Advisory and Appeals Board. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call to order um, after asking Monique um, if the um, staff confirmation that the Kansas Open Meeting Act um, requirement notice has been done? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'll go ahead and call to order um, Kimberly Cunningham, I'm here. Alicia Jester. Present. Fiona Beal. Present. Kevin Wright. Present. James Nolan. Diana Fairbanks. Present. Matthew Graham. Alisa Michelson. And then we do have one um, slot that's vacant for another uh, youth member if there's any interest of anyone that knows anyone that would like to do that. Um, I don't see any um, veterinarians present um, at the meeting today for them to give any comments. Um, I do have a citizen in the audience. Is there anything you wanted to approach and talk about at all? No? You have three minutes. Um, I requested DNA reports and what I got were three pages of absolutely less than what the DNA report should have been. When I re-requested it, Jacob Woods told me he couldn't do anything but that at this time. I DNA'd my own dog and it came back with three separate um, sections to the same DNA test that you guys have been using and all I got was the breed of what they are. I didn't get any of the medical. I didn't get any of the pictures of the dogs that they should look like or might look like. Okay. I mean, mine came with like 20 pages. Right, um, so uh, go ahead and re-request that. Um, we were having trouble downloading that from the site in order to put it in a PDF, but we do now have it in a PDF and I can okay. I can get that. And I, I don't know exactly what I mean, there's no at, date, there's no can, nothing on it, it's just because we now even have the like an in internal it. report that has like the date that it was sent, not the date it was sent in, but the date it was actually received and started on. So um, go ahead and re-request that okay. at from the city and then um, I'll get it to, I, Jacob should still, he should have the new stuff because I made a, a jump drive for him. Yeah, well I requested it a few days later and he said that's all. Okay, well I'll, I'll, I can talk to him and okay. see what. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and do an approval for the agenda for today. Um, do I have a motion to approve? All motion. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And then we have an approval of the minutes from our meeting back in November uh, 10th. And if everybody's had a moment to review that, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from that meeting? All motion. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So then we'll go on to the new, the fun stuff, and we'll go to the new business. Okay. Um, uh, the first um, order of new business is the donor walk. Um, I had gotten um, four um, estimates for the donor walk with a certain design and we've been working on that. Um, the, the estimates were past 30 days in order to get here um, and the people that I was using those, getting those estimates from have not been able to get me new estimates. So what we're doing is we're working on new estimates so we have correct numbers for the next meeting and then um, for the next board meeting and then there's gonna, I'm working on a new design um, because the design that we were working on before, I think it's going to be, it's gonna take up a lot of space at the front of the shelter for that walk and we want it to be a little smaller so we can do some other things with the front of the shelter that would help with like pictures and those kinds of things. So the donor walk is going, to, we're changing the design of what we were gonna do on the donor walk. And then those estimates then I will get, they'll redo the estimates for me and then we'll have those by the next meeting. Um, uh, next order of business was uh, the new hire. Um, we did get somebody hired and we're pretty excited to um, welcome Bridget Price on to, as an ACO. Um, she will start next week. 
Um, this will be our, our final ACO, hopefully. Um, that would make us completely um, staffed. Um, and we're super excited to get her on and she's super excited to come and work for, for us. Um, the next item would be um, need for cat volunteers. Um, we're getting to the point where cat season is getting ready to start. It never really stopped. We still are getting cats and mama kitten or mamas with babies and mamas pregnant. Even now, even through the winter, clear through December, we were getting those. And we have several very good cat volunteers, but we need more um, because those people that are volunteering for us are absolutely overwhelmed. Um, when we get, you know, 10 and 15 different litters of cats without mamas, uh, it's if for those three basic volunteers, it's a 24 hour job for them. We have one lady that's retired and, and she's to the point where she needs to not have so much. She still wants to volunteer, but she just, it's just an all day thing for her to clean and feed and all that. So we're really seeking new cat volunteers. If anybody has somebody who would like to volunteer or if you yourselves would like to volunteer or a family member, just let us know and we'll get you signed up um, with Sue and get everything going in that aspect. Oh, I guess I'm curious what exactly that role would uh, would be, would it be taking the cats home to be kind of foster at home? Yes. Okay. Yes. And some of them, I mean, some cats and kittens are pretty easy to manage. Like if you get a batch of just, you know, five week old kittens and they're kind of self reliant, they can at least feed themselves, but they're just not old enough to be spayed. They're not of weight. They're not of age to be spayed, neutered. Um, so that would be just meaning keeping those kittens fed and everything and you know taking care of until they're ready for surgery sometimes it's a little more bit more in depth where it's kittens that don't have a mama that need to be bottle fed or tube fed those are things that people that we need those are the people that we need the most the people that can really need some more the hands-on and that yes can 24 and some of it seven. Are just mamas that are really far along and they they're going to have their kittens in, in, in any minute and um, so we send them we want to send them to a, a, a foster as well um, mm. So they can go ahead and have their kittens. And then that would entail keeping them until mom is ready to have them weaned and the, the kittens are of age. So then everybody will come in at the same time and get spayed, neutered, and then put up for adoption. We very rarely have dog fostering, um, but we do. We, we could use a couple of people who'd be interested in that. Um, it, dog fostering would be like a mama with babies or I would do that. somebody who needed... Um, you know, somebody medical who attention. needed medical attention, somebody who needed that kind of hmm. stuff. Um, but those don't come up very often. Um, so it's more the cats right now that we need. But I wanted to throw out the dog thing there just in case. Um, uh, quick question. Uh -huh. Two questions. Um, first is, is that something like on the county Facebook page? Is that like a call for volunteers? Can we put that out on the county page, like the Facebook page or something? Is that I, something that's doable? I put, city. It, I put it on our face on the shelter Facebook page. Right. I I'm just wondering if there. the county or the city Facebook page would might get a little bit more track uh, more attention for someone who may not quite the isn't as hooked in. I can definitely research it and see what we need to do. Okay. Yeah. And then, we need to get it out there. Okay. I know the volunteers are, are telling people on a daily, hey, we need vo we need other volunteers. I know they're reaching out to friends and family and you know to people who come in or who are who ask about it. Right. We give them a form to fill out and then they give it uh, they then return it and we give it to the volunteers and they get it approved and all that because it goes through the friends of the shelter. Mm -hmm. um, so what are yeah. those foster candidate requirements? Um, basically, um, just have a place where you can keep the animal um, warm and dry and fed and it would be need to be on an inside not outside kept outside at all um inside and then there i'm not sure exactly what the restrictions are and like if you have other pets or children or things like that that would be we could talk to sue and get a list of requirements of what you would need to have that because she usually takes care of that she does the inspection she does do an inspection of the home before the person is approved um so that we make sure that we're following state standard for that so Yes, okay. friends of the shelter, um, and I can get a requirement sheet, and I can even post that on our <coughs> Facebook page or wherever we need to post it. Um, the requirement sheet could be up there as well. Okay. I guess my other question, uh, because you were talking about cat season and people bringing in litters, mm -hmm. is it truly that the cat the, the litters have been abandoned, or is it 
people being good citizens and finding litters of kittens where mama's maybe just off finding food. Well, we don't know. Okay. It's, it's a plethora of different <coughs> reasons why people bring in the litter. Sometimes the mama died. Um, the mama hasn't come back in days. They haven't seen the mama come back. Okay. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's all kinds of right. reasons why um, they bring them in, okay. you know, or, I'm just or, or if it's they an just, education they just thing. find them. And, you know, but at that mm -hmm. point, they can't keep them. So right. educating them is, is fine, but right. they can't physically keep the kittens and right. be right. safer dropping them off with us and for us to put them into mm -hmm. foster care. Okay. So, but yeah, there are uh, many reasons why. Right. Yeah, again, I, I guess I was thinking like, I see a lot of wildlife stuff, you know, people turning in baby deer right. and things, you know, without right. realizing, oh, mom may just be out doing that. And so I'm just wondering if, if there's some sort of campaign or info things that we can give out to, mm -hmm. hey, if you don't see mama right away, keep an eye out for right. a certain number of days because we have this a sheet happens. for wildlife. Um, right. And we also do ask people if they find a litter of kittens, if they could kind of watch it for just a little bit to see okay. if mama comes back. Mm -hmm. um, if, they, if they've watched it for a day or so and mama hasn't come back and we don't want those kittens mm -hmm. to freeze or right, right. be overheated or starve or die of thirst. So mm -hmm. we, you know, and then if they get mama kitten or mama at a later date, we'd be happy to take mama. Mm -hmm. We ask them if they have mama, bring mama with them, right. and then we'll take the whole batch of them. That way we can keep them all together because it's better for that mama to be with those babies clear to the very end mm -hmm. than to separate them all out. Right, right. We would rather have mama there if we can, but sometimes it's just not possible. Uh, I have a question. Do you have the, um, like, trapping the wild cats? Do you have that program and then spading them? Trap and release right now is or kind of on hold because of our... Um, we were pretty short staffed in the surgery area and with the it, what happens is the animal control officer has to go out there and set the traps the night before and then pick them up in the morning and at the moment we're just still really short mm -hmm. even with having the new person come on she's not trained mm -hmm. so we're you know we can't automatically count her in as already you know mm -hmm. ready to do her job things like that so it, it's something that we were pushing for that we're really working hard for um, and we're going to try and do a little bit more as we go into the spring to try and do it a little bit more. Um, we only have our doctor two days a week. And sometimes we're just, we're already full by the time we're already full of surgeries and don't have any space for trap and release. And we can only do so much in a day. Um, and we had talked about doing a, just a day of trap and release. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of a big undertaking to try and make sure you get out there, get all those full have doctor there, make sure that, you know, we have enough for her mm -hmm. to be able to do on that day and then be able to release them then that night. So at, we have done some trap and release over this past summer. We did a couple of areas we hit hard and um, people were, um, the public was having a lot of cats. And one, there was two times we went out, set traps, went the next morning, the traps had been unset no food was eaten, there was no cats in there, so somebody had gone in there and had sprung the trap, mm. but there were no cats in there, so it was one of those things where somebody had gone in there and just set the, you know, set the yeah. trap off. Yeah. So we tried again, then the next time, it happened again the next time, when oh we did my. it the next time. So mm. at the third time we went out there, we did end up getting two cats that, that third time that we went out there, but we were hoping for way more than two yeah. cats. So it's just kind of a, we do have signs that we can put out and we did put them out that say, you know, th this is a feral trap and release program, please leave the traps alone, but it yeah. didn't help. Well, I just wonder, I think that's a good program. Mm -hmm. so. I have a few cats around our place. <laughs> <laughs> we'll set one of those traps right around your place <laughs> then. We know you won't un undo it then. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, if we're done with the, with the volunteers, um, our next um, item was um, we had our USD3 and USDA inspection, and that went really well. Um, we had a new gentleman that had come and did that for us. Um, he was a gentleman that was in another area. They're kind of short um, on their inspectors. So the inspector that we normally have had already, he left and he took another job somewhere else in the pyramid of that program. 
Um, so we got a new guy and he was very easy to talk to, very nice, um, liked our facility. So I'm, we did get a good score. So I was pretty excited about that. <laughs> That's always one thing that you're like, oh, what's gonna happen? But we did, uh, we did a good job. Our staff did a really good job of making sure that you know we're ready for any minute, any day that that person's gonna come in, no matter if we know they're coming in the next day or not, mm -hmm. everybody was ready. Everybody had everything good and clean and, and we were just trying to make sure that we just live every day like that. The, the inspector's gonna come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, the inspector's gonna come tomorrow. Okay, so we just try and do that every day. Mm -hmm. um, we have been extremely full. I don't know if you've seen our pleas on Facebook about, you know, that we're really, really full. Um, we did have Manhattan came, they were very empty. They didn't have any adoptable dogs for some reason. And they offered to come and they came two weeks in a row, two Wednesdays in a row. And we just let them pick, hmm. take what you want. And they, they came and took quite a few of our dogs for us and helped ease us out of, you know, being over full. Um, Hutch did take a couple of animals um, at the same time. They took t uh, two dogs. Um, but Manhattan probably took about 11 dogs total for us, which really helped us out because we were just extremely, nobody was reclaiming dogs, um, any of the stray dogs. In fact, this weekend we had the same issue. We had, we were already kind of full and then we got six dogs in on Sunday, just, just Sunday alone, six dogs. And then Monday we were out, we had three officers out all day long, three officers just doing nothing but chasing stray dogs. So I don't know if it was the weather or, you know, cause it was beautiful. It was two days were really pretty and it was warm and dogs were just getting out. We, I don't know what the deal was, but it was just kind of crazy. We're kind of easing up a little bit. We had some dogs that were claimed on Monday. Um, we did bring several more dogs in, um, but we're, we're not as tight as what we were. So, and then um, we did have a big cat hoarding situation that we've been dealing with for, um, when did that start? Oh, about a month December. ago December I think I have a kitty yeah um, and uh, those cats all the cats are out of the house they've all been spayed neutered or they're in foster care waiting to be spayed or neutered and most of them actually got adopted by just regular people hmm. they were they were very most of them were very nice cats hmm. they just were in a situation that was not good for them but those, all those cats are, are there, I think we still have four left that are in the back um, that oh. we're still kind of working on. But How many that, were there? There was 56 altogether. Mm. In a house? Mm -hmm. Holy yeah, cow. so um, they, and we got them all out and hopefully, you know, ev all of them are doing well. Um, haven't had any come back. I think there might be one or two left in foster care. Mm, yeah, there's a, there, a there, lot of them came around and, and were able to, there was a Came couple down. that some, were some had to go as barn cats. Yeah, they were just so there's feral. a couple that they want to be friendly, but they just they are they're like oh I don't know I'm, they're, they're still kind of thinking about it. But we sent them to our cat guru, Bruce, and <laughs> they're hanging out with him. And you know, they'll they'll be acceptable kitties when they get done at mm -hmm. Bruce's house. So, <laughs> but that's pretty much all I have this time. So. So you're full on dogs, but not cats right now? Um, we are, the back is full, we're waiting for surgery. And so once surgery goes through tomorrow, then I think, I think we have, we have a couple of strays. We have strays. a little bit of space right now. Yeah, we have we're more okay. space now than we've had in a, in a long time. Hmm. So we, do, we are accepting stray cats. We've been, uh, we've got, I think we got three in today and then one walk-in that we went ahead and mm -hmm. took in. Um, but most of them were kitties that have an injury to them. Oh. We had two that came in with uh, some sort of an injury. So those went to the vets today and then they'll come back after they're back from the vet. And then um, we have to wait until they're actually our property, the 72 hours, and then they will then go up probably Monday um, if, if they're ours on Monday, mm -hmm. maybe not till Thursday, but um, yeah. So we've got a little bit more space. We've got a little bit of breathing room. So right now. Does the 72 hour hold um, are the weekends counted in those hours? Saturday is counted, but not Sunday because Saturday is an open business day for us. But since we're closed Sunday, we don't count that as part of the 72 hours. Okay. So once they haven't been claimed in 72 hours, mm -hmm. then they belong to the shelter. Correct. Right. Okay. And they can be adopted out or 
Right. We we will spay them, neuter them, get them ready to adopt out. Then they'll become ready because once they become our property, they're not always adoptable because they're not spayed or neutered. They're they're not adoptable until they're spayed, neutered, right. and all that. So uh, 72 hours is is our legal amount of time we have to hold them for, but sometimes they have to wait a little bit longer. Sure. Like say doctors are on vacation and she's not gonna be there all week. Um, if we have, if we can get them into the local vets, we try, but um, we kind of wanna you know, try and get them into our, our vet that comes. So sometimes they wait a little bit and sometimes that helps them acclimate a little bit sure. better. Um, Cause some, a lot of times they're, they're scared and they need that time to calm down and be you know, have some quiet time and get to know people because a lot of them are just they don't they've never been around people yeah. or if they or if they've have been around people it's not a lot of really good social interaction so you just wonder where they come from when they're adults mm -hmm. you know it's so curious yeah. how many dogs can we can we hold um, we have 32 kennels in the large dog kennel and then we have a through p in um, the other kennel, but we use, uh, in the 32 kennel, we have two drain kennels that we usually keep as drain kennels, and we did end up using those over the weekend um, because we just did not have any space. We usually like to keep those two drain kennels open because that's where you clean out the drain and let it air and stuff like that, but if we have to use them, we can co cover that drain up and use them, and we did end up doing that this weekend. And then wow. the other kennel, on the court hold kennel on that side, um, we leave that one kennel open at the end that has the drain in it, but we can use that one if we need to. So there's quite a bit, of, we have a lot of space, but we fill up really fast. And we also got some dogs from a rescue that were, um, we're still working with them. Um, how many did we get? Six. Six. Yeah. Um, and they were like schnauzer mixes that yeah. um, that we're working with on those. And so those are, there's three in one kennel because they're small, they're like little. And there's three in one kennel and two in the other kennel. Um, they're not, they're not very social. They're not, they're, get, they're starting to get friendly and starting to get to the point where we can touch them. Um, but it's taking some time. I mean, I go in there and I sit on the kennel floor and one will jump up. The two particular, I really kind of get in there and try and get with those. And then there's another gal that's been working with the other three. And I can get the big one to jump on my lap now and just kind of come to me. But the little tiny one, it, it just, it doesn't want to have a thing to do. And now if I pull it over, if I pick it up yeah. and put it on me, it'll stay. But I think it's just like, I can't move. I'm terrified. So, but you know, they're gonna be workable at some point. I mean, they're, they'll come around. It just takes a while. So those are kennels that we're holding, you know, open because, and they've been there for a while. Week, two weeks. Okay. Yeah, oh, and I do wanna mention um, this weekend, self-promotion, we're having a Conklin Cars uh, event um, from nine to noon where we're adopting, anything that's adoptable is going out to Conklin Cars and you can come out there, no appointment. It's, uh, we kind of called it Conklin's Cupids because um, Valentine's Day is Monday, so we're promoting it like Valentine's Day. They'll have little bandanas on, and Aww. they're gonna do like a little photo, little card that looks like a, a, one of those Instamatic camera type things, and you can get your picture taken with your new pet and everything like that. Aww. So mm -hmm. we're, that's where we're promoting really hot and heavy this week, trying to get some space um, you know, trying to get some, some animals adopted so we can free some space up. But we've got a lot of really great dogs that need good homes. And we had a batch of puppies that we were gonna send to Manhattan and they filled up so, so much they couldn't take them. So I put them up today um, so we could try and get them moving before Saturday. Because again, we're probably gonna fill up with strays again. So, but yeah, that Saturday will be a big push for the Cupid's, Conklin's Cupid's, mm -hmm. so. Conklin Cupid's. <laughs> Cute. Um, just a question on the cat. You said we have some some room now. Mm -hmm. um, what, do, what do we tell people? I mean, being a board member, sometimes we get phone calls, uh -huh. you know? I mean, what do we tell people when, you know, a cat has come to their house, it was cold? You know, you guys had the hoarding situation, mm -hmm. so we didn't have any room. Right. And well, and, and if they can't keep them, there's some people that can't. But my thing is, let us scan it, see if it has a microchip, 
there's not a leash law on cats. And I understand people get upset when I tell them this, but there is not a leash law on cats in Salina. Mm -hmm. And normally, if it looks healthy and it's of a healthy weight, it's probably somebody's cat that they let in and out. Mm -hmm. And it's just come up to there because maybe they put food on their porch for another cat or their own cat. And if there's food out, the cat doesn't care yeah. whose food <laughs> it is. It's just mm -hmm. gonna walk over there. Now, if it's very injured or very sickly looking, things like that, we'll come pick That's it up. But just okay. on, a, on a daily basis, we do not usually pick up cats. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Simply because there's not a leash law and we've been kind of yelled at because why do you have my cat? It was out doing cat things. Why did you pick it up? Well, we didn't pick it up. Somebody brought it into us or somebody called us to come pick it up. And we got, and then they get upset. And usually I will waive the fee for them to pick up their cat because nobody picks up cats. I mean, like nobody reclaims cats. It's just like, it's just gonna stay there unless they really, really want it. And that, but I usually waive that fee for them to come get their cat because it's really not their fault that the cat's there. Mm -hmm. So I usually try and let the cat go home at that point because we want it to go home we don't want it to keep we don't want to keep it. it we want it to be with family so that is i mean if the cat is very sick and injured we're going to definitely come and get it um uh if it's healthy weight have you asked your neighbor you know have you have you asked around is have you had it scanned for a chip that's the one thing is it ha scanning it for a chip because a lot of times we're finding these cats do have chips and it just lives the next street over like their <laughs> back door neighbors mm -hmm. yeah. um, and those kinds of things or it just lives two houses down and they don't people a lot of times people don't know their neighbors right and or they've just moved in and they don't know the cat so I usually try and ask those questions first okay um. oh, I had a question kind of regarding microchipping do you guys do like microchipping clinics or like at the adoption event bring your own dog we'll chip it for you kind of we haven't thing. done that um as of yet all, again staffing mm -hmm. right. um when we do an adopt or like when we do an adoption event we have to have at least one officer there so then that takes an officer out of right, the right. out of service out of the bill out of the building on saturdays mm -hmm. and we only have very limited staff on on saturdays anyway mm -hmm. so to have a microchip clinic at a promotion like that we found doesn't really work very well. Now, if okay. we had a microchip promotion, I would just do it as a microchip promotion. Okay. We just haven't done that yet. It's something that's kind of on my register mm -hmm. that, that I'd like to do. Right. Um, and you know, it's not, it's, it, I was part of a microchip clinic mm -hmm. when I first started, before I even started at the shelter when I was a vet tech and it was great. I mean, we had all the vets here in town at the shelter and we all just got together and mm -hmm did the microchipping and it, it was it was a really neat thing and it's great to have your pet microchip. That's mm -hmm. one of the best things you could do for your pet right. is to have it microchip. But that is something that's on my radar. Okay. I was gonna yeah. say, I you know, I, I work with the rescue mm -hmm. uh, and we've done adopt, uh, adoption events and fundraiser car wa uh, dog washes mm -hmm. here in town. Yeah. And we and we always bring the microchips and we, as a, yeah. as a donation fee and that's, I was surprised by the number of people here in Salina that would come to that. Right. Just and for, for I, I that believe, and pay the $20 donation. Yeah, I believe it would be a really good program uh -huh. for us to do. It's just, when we have a, a an event, we have that one officer there. This week, this time I got a lot of us together. Um, Lisa and I are going to work Saturday in the shelter and take care of shelter stuff. Mm -hmm. And then my three officers are going to be then at the um, event. And then we have a few volunteers and that's part of it is we just don't even have enough volunteers to help with those things because we only have just a certain few volunteers that will work on a Saturday or that will come in on a Saturday mm -hmm. so and it's not their job to come and do that if, if they want to come in we would we want them to be there and we love for them to be there but you know that sometimes on Saturdays they have other things they want to do a lot of them come in every day during the week and then spend time with their families on Saturday so those, when we when we can get volunteers for us on Saturdays, we want to make sure that they're very well taken care of on that Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you think not being open is affecting our adoptions at all? I know we talked about that um, um, at I the last meeting, and I just wondered the if schedule, the appointment schedule. On I just actually changed it this week okay. to allow for more adoption appointments. And so like certain days of the week is the 
the two days of the week that we're really, really short staff and that we have surgeries on because when we have surgery that pulls Lisa and I completely out of the picture of being able to be up front, do anything in the shelter because we're having to concentrate on, on the on surgery. So then on those days that we're short, that person, I only have a person in the office and then I have a person in the truck. I don't have anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's it. So that on those days I have the appointment schedule is licensing. You can make an appointment all day long for licensing, all day long for surrenders, all day long for reclaims, um, just little things that you need to come in for, drop off donations, whatever you want to do, certain days for that. And then there's three other days that those days are completely dedicated to adoption appointments. And so I start at 9.30 in the morning and we go until 4.30 in the afternoon. That's a lot of appointment slots. Um, right. And so we just started it this week, so we're gonna kind of yeah. gauge how we're doing. I don't know that, that the appointment schedule and how we're doing things as far as like making everybody have an appointment, I don't know that that's affecting the adoption process because okay. we have a lot of people that want to adopt and everybody wants to make an appointment, but it seems like everybody wants the same dog. So it's kind of like, oh. you know, we have, we don't have that one first come, dog. first serve again? So, and it's first come, first serve. Okay. So we, we do everything that way. So, but we try and make sure that everybody can get an appointment. We offer, you know, if you can't come in this day, can't, how about if I get you in here? And so I, the three full days of, of being able to adopt, I think is going to be very helpful. Um, and then those two days that we don't have adoptions on those days, I, I think when we were telling people last week about, you know, this week, all day long, this day, and all day long, this day, you can just do licensing, uh, whatever, surrenders, whatever you need to do. And it's very helpful for the staff, too, because then I have enough staff to, for somebody to sit there and do licensing all day and take surrenders and that kind of thing. But if they had to throw in uh, adoptions in there with it, it's really hard for that one person mm -hmm. to do all that. Now we have one person starting, but she's not trained. And so it's gonna be a while before she can be trained. So I can't really count her as that office person sure. right now. So, but um, usually once I get done helping Lisa um, with surgery and start doing that stuff, she's usually in there until three o'clock. Um, and then I usually kind of break out of there about 11 and then I can get in and help and relief for lunches and try and get all that stuff in. Cause it's, you know, we gotta give people a break to go eat and that kind of thing. And so if it's just, it's how we have to do it right now. Sure. Um, so I don't know if it'll change in the future. We, it's been working so far, but we're going to gauge it with how we change, how I changed it, okay. and kind of do a little bit of research and see how many, if any people are, if it's helpful or if it's not helpful. A lot of people say they really like it because then they get a whole half hour mm -hmm. with the dog, whereas before it was like you just got just a little bit of time, and then there was somebody else waiting that they wanted to see the dog too. So oh. if you get a whole half an hour now, it's a little bit longer and you get, and if I have a volunteer there uh, that can take you back and take you out to the dog park with that dog, that's gonna give you even that more, much more time. Mm -hmm. So, and you, uh, it's one person at a time, like one family or one person at a time for that. And you can be up front in the front area you can play with that dog. You can bring your own dogs. You can bring your children at that point. Yeah. And there's nobody else walking through, interrupting you. It's that's your time with that animal. Didn't what you mention that it's another animal? You can see, uh, uh, you can see several animals. You don't have to just see one. You have that ha that half hour block. Didn't you so. mention that it's easier on the dog too? Because it's oh, it's on traffic and so, so much. The the, the, the not letting people walk through the 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 shelter like we used to. That is that has changed the attitude of the dogs so much. Mm -hmm. They are so much more calm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's times it's like silent. Mm -hmm. There is times that it's quiet. Yeah, I mean, not it's, very often. But usually, <laughs> like when we had people walking through, it was constant, like right. constantly mm -hmm. dogs barking, them constantly being up and aroused, and they'd never had a downtime. Mm -hmm. I know they have nighttime to have downtime, but you got to have some piece during the day and it's very loud in there mm -hmm. even with the acoustical tiles that we put in there it's still very loud in there and that does affect them mm -hmm. and I we've noticed that since COVID when we started that with COVID and we've continued it to now the dogs are I think they're much more comfortable 
they don't get riled up. We've had zero bites, mm -hmm. zero bites, where we were having bites all the time for people just opening up the kennels and taking them out. Mm -hmm. So, and it spreads disease, less disease because people can bring those mm -hmm. things on their shoes and then take it into the kennel. So we, it's, it's safer for the pet. Mm -hmm. So we just wanna make sure our animals are happy and healthy and to make sure that they're not being overstressed. And constantly people coming in there and banging on the glass and opening the doors, that's a lot of stress on a dog. I know if my dog was in there, it would be very stressful for them. So bringing it out and they can see whoever they want. They can see, you know, as many as they want in that half hour period. And if there's nobody behind them, if there's not an appointment behind them, we just let them keep going. If they want to just stay and keep looking at them or stay and keep playing with that dog, we just let them stay until the next appointment shows yeah. up. So it kind of sounds like even though maybe the appointments might be a little bit of an inconvenience to some, it's ultimately better because it's, it's better for the dog. It's better, better for the animals, for staff. which is what, I mean, that's kind of the motivator. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and I've had people say they really like it. They yeah. really like, they're like, you know, I, did, I didn't like this. I didn't think it was fair mm -hmm. that you guys were doing this. But then when they went through the process and did it, then they were like, I, I can see it now. Mm -hmm. You know, once you sit down and look at it, you know, then, they, then they're like, oh, I, I see it now. Mm -hmm. So, and the dog comes out and is just happy to see somebody and happy to play. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's kind of a neat experience. Mm -hmm. So, and then they get to hang out there and the dog can just run around and do its thing and come to them. They can throw a ball for it and everything. And then, if I do, like I said, if I have enough people, I could, they can even get to go out to the dog park with one of the volunteers and go hang out out there for a little bit. So, so it, like if they bring their dog and we want to see how they do out there, sure. we can put them out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's great. Good deal. Does anyone else have any new business they wanted to ask of any to bring I up? I have a question. I don't know if it's. Sure. Um, last time, you know, you were talking about that you send the dogs like out of state. Like transferring? Sometime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're a no kill shelter. Do Correct. they go to a no kill shelter? We, we try and stick with no kill shelters. We've not sent anybody out of state that wasn't no kill. Okay. Now, we do sometimes send dogs to Kansas Humane, and they are not classified as a no-kill, but they're working really hard to try and, and be no-kill. Because there's the animal control part of it mm -hmm. that definitely is not no-kill, and then there's the Humane Society part of it. They're two separate entities. Mm -hmm. But those dogs from the animal shelter, Wichita Animal Shelter, go over to Kansas Humane. So, but Kansas Humane works really hard at it, and they'll let me know if they don't, if they don't have space or if they have too many of this breed or too many of that. They'll let me know that they can't take it. Mm -hmm. okay. so. All right, and this is probably just off the cuff a little bit, but I've had somebody that has called me several times. Do you guys know who's responsible for the ducks at Jerry Ivy Park? Parks and Rec is saying they're not. Um, We're if not. If they're wild ducks, that would right, be. Right, they can come and go. That's whoever. Okay. The domestic ducks. Yes. Um, if they're sick or injured, we're going to go out there and try and help them. Okay. They're not supposed to be being fed. There are signs out there that say do not feed the ducks. Yeah. But <laughs> we know that that's not happening. Yeah. Well, uh, this so, person's very concerned that right. they're and not getting the shelter they need and not getting fed. Well, uh, but these do we did put some ducks out there, and uh, there were used to be shelters out there. There used to be oh. like these mm -hmm. little red, yeah, like yeah. barn-looking things out there. And mm -hmm. I, I honestly have not been to Jerry Ivy in a million years. Um, well, uh, aren't I'm sorry. Those shelters aren't there anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway. I mean, we're gonna go out there and take care of them if they're sick or injured. Sure. Problem sometimes is, is we get out there and we obviously see the duck is sick and injured, but it goes out on the pond. <laughs> right. So at that point, we can't get it on the pond because we, we can't go in the water. We don't, it, there's blue green algae in there. So we can't go sure. into the pond. Sure. I understand um, if that. we can catch the, the duck, we did have a lady catch a duck and bring it to us. And we, we you know, called the vet and, it, cause we're not vets by any means. We called the vets, nobody would see the duck. No. Nobody saw, nobody would, none of the vets would look at the duck. So we were just kind of like, okay, it's hydrated. It's, I mean, I mean as far as we were concerned, it, it looked like a healthy duck. So 
<laughs> we, we're like, we're going to have to put it back out there because we don't sure. have anywhere else to put it. We don't have, we didn't have anybody who would take it because we can reach out to people who say, oh, hey, call me if you need, if you have ducks and we'll take them. Well, then when we need that and we call them, they're like, no, we don't want them. So we really don't have anywhere to go with them. And they're used to being out there. So we're going to put them back out there. We don't want any new ducks out there. No. We don't want anybody to put anything new out there. But no. eventually these little guys that are out there are, are going to, you know, kind of go to the end of their life cycles. And then we're hoping that they don't get replaced by, I mean, the wild ducks can come in and do what yeah. they want to do. But the little domestic ducks were, I mean, we can do what we can for them. But is there any way, do you have any idea who would have? maybe done those shelters years ago to provide anything uh, uh, but yet if we provide something i don't know if that would encourage people then yeah i don't know i, th I think that's something there. that we need to talk about i mean i think it's something so i don't know as as the shelter maybe we can figure something out i, I didn't can, know you know speak with greg salisbury he's the gentleman who handles the wild end of it and kind of talk to him about you know like what would what would we do i i'm not sure of the 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 you know the future for the pond out there so I yeah i know we just need to figure there's out there's concern there too we, so we can i mean we can sit down and talk about it and see what we need to do okay. who, who feeds the ducks now the domestic ones uh they are supposed to just be fending for themselves um, okay as, there, nobody goes citizens. out there and feeds them nobody <laughs> okay. goes out there and does i mean we don't nobody just goes out there and takes care of them okay and i i do believe that there is a one person in particular and w so one of the officers got a picture of it she just went out there and dumped a whole bag of um seed or not seed but grain out there for them and just right by the sign right underneath the sign so it was just kind of <laughs> And I, I mean, I understand. I don't want it, I don't want them to starve either. Mm -hmm. Were the domestic ducks put out there by the city at one point? I don't know how they got out there. Oh, they've been out there as long as I've ever known to okay. be here. <laughs> they, I mean, they've just always been out there. Okay. Some go, some come, some go. I mean, it's just, it's just. Yeah, some of them can't fly. I right. Guess. Well, we so, have ducks I don't down know. at the shelter that we pulled from an abandoned house that are mallard ducks. Yeah. But they've been domesticated. So it's like, what do we do? You know, so I called Greg Salisbury and he's all like, well, they're kind of domesticated now, so maybe we can find a place for them. And I do have a place for them. I have a lady coming to get them either today or tomorrow. Oh, good. The ducks will be taken care of. And she's got a really nice place out in the county. So I'm comfortable with that. And I have two roosters left. So <laughs> anybody need a rooster? She's just taking the ducks. Yeah, she can't take the roosters. So. Well, we checked with the zoo. The The person that's been concerned about the ducks did check even with the zoo to see if they would be willing um, to take these ducks that can't get away from the pond. Right. Well, and, and here's stuff, the thing is, is what will the public either. outcry be if we pull the ducks off of the pond? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Because people, are, I want to feed the ducks. I want to go out there. My kids want to feed the ducks. They, we do it every day. So is it... Do we pull them off the pond I don't know. or, yeah. you know, I don't know. I think it's something we should talk about. I just, you know, I said I would mention that since I was in, in the group. So sure. anything else? I do have a question. Um, Pre-COVID, way back, pre-COVID, we had talked about driving by and looking at locations for another dog park. Mm -hmm. um, did that, whatever came of that? We, it's something that eventually we're going to do it's just not on the it's not on for 2022 mm -hmm. um i'm not sure where i'm at for 2023 yet i think we're just starting 2023 kind of all that kind of stuff but i don't know where it's at i i understand that people want a lot of things out at at barkley park so do we and that here's the rub is do i go ahead and get all that stuff for barkley park and get that taken care of what they want out there and then years down the road then we'll do another park um, it's, we're just kind of trying to, to, to see what we, where we're at. I got some benches out there. Um, the, uh, Rick Martin got some, ben some more benches out at the park, which I thanked him very much because people were needing more benches. So, and then at 2022, I've got some stuff that we're going to do out there as well. Um, when time allows and when, when it, when I can get somebody to help, you know, because I can't pour concrete and do all those things. Mm -hmm. So once we get that decided, um, then we'll kind of present it to you a little bit more. Okay, and then we had some old business. Do you need to 
talk about anything that's on the old business here? Um, I don't, unless you have something that you need to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I just have one question. We have just a few minutes. Have we ever, at one time, um, we do have new commissioners, you know, on board and stuff, mm -hmm. and we still have a group that are, are still very much wanting um, to change our our uh, pit bull, mm -hmm. for better uh, word, um, ordinance and mm -hmm. stuff. Question was, at one time, you were going to kind of check around with some of the other shelters that do not have, you know, the breed-specific legislation ordinances to see if that had been contradictory for them, the shelter themselves, just right. contradictory to the shelter. Was that something that you've even been able to even it's do? It's something that I have been working on because like there, there's a new city every day, it seems like that has repealed their bans. Mm -hmm. um, I have found, and this is just me personally, my shelter personally, this is what I have been dealing with when I have a pit bull that needs to go to a different area, just, I've no, what, we've noticed that there has been several that have in the last year have repealed their bans. When we try and have always been able to get those pit bulls to those areas easily, okay, yeah, we'll take it, blah, blah, blah. Now I, it, I, have, I can't get anything anywhere. I can't move and I don't know if that's because they repealed their ban and then now they're full of pit bulls or just that they're just full of pit bulls. That they, that like, is, is are people not adopting or, or what? But I have had so much trouble in the last like seven months trying to move what a lot I of have them. because they're full so they can't take what I have. So that's really hard because, you know, they're good. The, the ones that we have are, are good and they, 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 they need a place to go, I just can't find a place for them to go. Now, occasionally somebody will pop up and say, okay, I have room for one. And it's like, yay, and we celebrate because then we've got one. But then we've still got many more that we still haven't been able to move. And I don't know exactly why. You know, I've, I've talked to the directors in those, um, in those facilities and we're, we've talked about, well, have you had an uptick? Do you, do you think it's because you don't have a breed ban? But some of these places are places that didn't have breed bans. They, they never had a breed ban, but they're full of just that one. There's just so many of the mixes anymore, it seems like. Well, and then that mixes, that's what's reason. hard for us is because yeah. then they, we have a mix as well um, and it's, you know, we wanted to move it and they're like, I can't, I have too many that look like that. I can't, I have too many black ones. I can't, I have too many brown and white ones. You know, I mean, it's just like, okay, so I wait. And then they're like, reach out to me, give me a couple weeks. And so I reach out again and consistently like clockwork. And they're probably like, oh, I wish that girl would just leave us alone. But I keep working at it and they're still full, still full, still full. Is the percentage of the ones that come into us from homes or are they strays or I'm, I'm assuming that if they did belong to somebody and they get out and they come to the shelter, there's probably people that don't even come down to right. try to get their right. dog because they know the rules, the, they know the law. So, okay, just wondered, curious. All right, anything else? All right, well, if there isn't anything else, I will call an adjournment for the meeting. Um, if I can have a motion. All motion. Second. All, all right, all those all right. in favor to adjourn? Okay. Right. We will adjourn. Thank you.